Hi guys, Stormtrooper1 back again with another picture vlog of my trip to Japan in 2023 to 2024 and I have seen that there have been plenty of views on last week's picture vlog and I want to say thank you for all the love and sharing the video that you have done so far. This week we're going to be going over what we went through in the first week of 2024 or with more wrestling shows and of course more for gaming related content and pictures for everyone to see. Now if you haven't seen last week's video, I will leave a link down in not only the description below but also on the card on the right of the screen, so please do check it out when you get the opportunity. And right now, let's get started with the first day of 2024! For the first day of 2024, we headed to Ueno Park to enjoy the temples that were around, as well as some of the traditional Japanese stalls that were serving hot food and beverages out in the open. And we even went around and saw some of the local wildlife that was inhabiting the park and the ponds as well, including some of the biggest koi fish that you will ever see as well as some unique looking ducks around the uh, park where there were also some paddle boats where you will also have to use your feet to actually move them. We also took in some of the smoke that was coming from some of the incense at the temple so that we could also honor our friend who sadly passed away uh, that previous week. Once our business in Ueno was completed, we then took another train back to Shibuya and we weren't there for some uh, wrestling shopping or anything of the sort, we were actually heading to the Tokyo Metropolitan Government Building and it was humongous, absolutely the breathtaking. I just froze at the sight of the building itself and when we got there, there was a really long queue at about 3 o'clock uh, in the afternoon and it looked like the queue was about 20 to 25 minutes long and we just decided that it wasn't worth going into the building even though it was free to enter we just didn't want to risk going in and only have a quick peek only to be asked to leave the building so we just left after seeing the building and then we headed back into the main area of Shibuya to do some more window shopping and to see what else we could get there wasn't that many stores open on New Year's Day, but there were plenty for us to uh, go in and have a look around, see what they had to offer, as well as some restaurants that were also offering food. So, overall, that first day of the New Year was pretty good. The second day of 2024 took us to the artificial man-made island of Odaiba in Tokyo, and it was an absolutely amazing feat of engineering that we were standing on and our first stop in Odaiba was the Gundam shop and we even got a chance to stand in front of a real life-size Gundam. The model that was on display was the Unicorn Gundam. Now I haven't seen that anime at all but if anyone has and would recommend it to me please let me know down in the comments below because I have got to get myself into uh, the Gundam again. And then, once we were done in that Gundam store, we took another look around a, another shopping center. Then we made our way to Ariake Arena, where we were there for another wrestling show. This time it was for the wrestling promotion Noah. Now the show was really great, they even had a female wrestling match there, where the Great Rooter's daughter debuted, and she had one heck of a performance, they even used the famous Mist move that they were known for and it was an absolutely amazing experience to watch another wrestling promotion besides New Japan. One thing to mention about the trains that we used to get to Odaiba, they weren't driven by humans, they were actually automated. They were automated subway trains that we rode on and there wasn't even a driver at the front like I said so we managed to get some footage of us being at the front of the train heading out of Odaiba and right back into Shibuya which was fantastic. On the Wednesday we really didn't do much because we were still going to get prepared for our Wrestle Kingdom show in the Tokyo Dome. So what we did was we went around and bought uh, a lot of uh, presents for our friends and family back home in the UK and of course we also popped in and saw a nice little Tom and Jerry cafe. But I do have to uh, give you a warning, if you ever do find that shop, prepare to be blown away by the prices because it was 
amazingly expensive. It was like 15 pounds for a lunch and we were not going to pay that much just to get something to eat. So what we did was we went out into a street restaurant and then we just had some lunch while we were out there in Shibuya. We also took the opportunity to play a couple of arcade games as well while we were uh, doing the shopping, so it was uh, not really that complete of a waste of a day. Thursday, January the 4th was the big day for us as it was the main reason why we came to Japan in the first place. It was Wrestle Kingdom Day for us, but before we actually went and watched the entire event from 4 in the afternoon to about 8 or 9, we actually went to another wrestling show before Wrestle Kingdom. So we went to another stardom show where it was held in Kurokin Hall, not too far from Tokyo Dome. So we just spent half 12 till about uh, 3.20 in the afternoon, ready and watching the entire, the entire show, and we enjoyed it so much that we even had a chance to uh, meet some of the stars of the show after the Wrestle Kingdom performance. After our wrestling show the day before, we then took off into the streets of Tokyo once again and then headed straight to the Ginza district where it is the most expensive area to do your shopping anywhere in Tokyo, including an official Sony store and a Nissan car dealership. We actually went into both of those stores because they were in the same building. We saw how amazing the car was and we just had to take a couple of pictures of it. And we even stopped by the Sony Picture Museum to uh, see the artwork of one Kato Shu who went to Scotland for one of her projects and she took some beautiful photographs. When we were done looking at technology and vehicles, we then moved on to a goldfish art exhibit in a shopping center not far from where we came from. And in order to get to that exhibit, it was a bit of an odd trek. We had to get off on the ninth floor in order to get down onto the 8th floor where the exhibit was being held, but it was definitely worth the trek and believe me, the pictures speak volumes for themselves. They were absolutely amazing. You could not believe how well built those fish tanks were and the lights reflecting off the scales of the goldfish was absolutely stunning and breathtaking. You just could not look anywhere else other than the goldfish. And it wasn't just normal goldfish but it was all kinds of variants of the fish that you could see in the uh, displays. And everything that was happening in that museum, it was all beautifully constructed. It was just fantastic to get pictures in that museum. You just had to share it with the rest of the world, especially the experience. Once we've seen enough of the goldfish, we then left the shopping center and then moved over to where the Imperial Palace was located. Now unfortunately because of the pictures, the, we didn't really get that much of a good look at the Imperial Palace, but it was plenty enough to see what the outside looked like, but I wish that I just had taken better shots, but never mind. Once we left the Imperial Grounds, we then had to go to another park so we can decide on what we can do next. And after a bit of searching online, we found out that there is a graveyard not far from where we were, which is actually very famous in the history of Japan. It was the graveyard of the 47 Ronin. Now, if you've ever seen the film The 47 Ronin, I won't explain it to you, but for everyone who doesn't know, it's the graveyard of the 47 Samurai who avenged their master's dishonor by killing the warlords that did their warlord the dishonor that he received. So they went out and killed him, decapitated his head, brought it to the graveyard of their fallen master, surrendered themselves to the other warlords, and then left their fate in their decision where the warlords then decided after months of deliberation, instead of executing them, they, they gave them the opportunity to commit harakiri, which is the art of honorable suicide. And they all did just that, and they were buried in the site of the 47 Ronin, where their master lies as well. It was a beautiful location, and we just had to pay our respects to those samurai who have paved the way for our culture today. On the Saturday, I went to Akihabara to spend a little bit of time with my friend before he went and had his tattoo done, 
and while he was away, I played lots of arcade games including Dune Beats and Guitar Mania. I also had the opportunity to play other games like Street Fighter 6 the Arcade Edition and Initial D which is based off the manga of the same name and I gotta say I was pretty good at both games and I've started to consider if I should invest in a fighting stick and a racing wheel for my console games. Let me know down in the comments below what you guys think. There is one thing about the tipping point games that I mentioned from last week's video, is that there is no gambling allowed in Japan, so instead of using actual yen, you had to use tokens to play the games. And it all gets around the gambling laws which are very strict in Japan, so if you ever do want to play any tipping point game machines, make sure you have plenty of yen on hand, especially the physical kind, to buy the tokens to play those games, because they were awesome to play. For the final day of our trip to Japan, we went back to Asakusa and we hung out with New Japan Pro Wrestling star Zack Sabre Jr. It was actually a great time chatting with him about things outside of work and wrestling and of course life in Japan in general, especially how impressed he was with how much we got through in our two weeks in the country. Especially now since I want to move to Japan in the not so distant future. And that is it for my last week in Japan and I enjoyed every minute of it and I look forward to the day that I actually do move to the country in the near future. And I hope that you enjoy these videos as well as I have made these picture vlogs. And if you do, please consider hitting that subscribe button if you haven't already become a channel subscriber yet as it would really help me out a lot and grow my channel in the near future. Anyway, happy gaming guys and I shall see you real soon.